Rubber bands aren't the most useful source of power for an aircraft, but despite this, I've spent the last month attempting to build the largest rubber band aeroplane in the world. Why? Well, because you've been asking for more aeroplane projects, and I wanted to test my aeroplane making skills with a brand new challenge. Will this plane survive its many test flights? And can I get it to fly for more than 12 seconds, which is the same amount of time that the Wright Brothers' first aeroplane flew for in 1903? And yes, you can be sure that this flight is going to be just as historic. Now here's the problem, I haven't actually built a successful rubber powered plane before, so this is really going to stretch my aerospace engineering skills to the limit. Until this point, the largest rubber powered plane in the world had a 10 foot wingspan, so my plane would have to have a greater wingspan than this. Before I could start building though, I had to figure out how much power I'd have at my disposal. Right, firstly I'm going to make a rig to test loads of different rubber bands. I'm going to be using this load cell and data logger, which was kindly donated to me by Will Trent, one of my subscribers. So thank you very much, Will. Normal rubber bands that you can buy in the store were all quick to break and didn't produce a significant amount of power for a significant amount of time, which meant that any aircraft powered by them would have quite a short flight duration. But what if I was to make my own rubber bands with strips of rubber specially manufactured for rubber powered aircraft? Is this cheating? Well, I didn't think so. Tying my my own bands together with these strips of rubber meant that I could make them any length I wanted. I found longer rubber bands ran for a much longer duration and had a more gradual power curve. I played around with different thicknesses and lengths of rubber until I found a combination that would produce an average of around 80 grams of thrust for 10 seconds at 300 wines. My thoughts about this at the moment are that I'm going to be combining lots of these motors together to get a greater maximum thrust so that basically we can multiply the individual thrust of one motor by however motors we can fit on the wing. Okay, so I had the power, now to get started building an aeroplane. Seeing as though I'd never actually designed a successful rubber band plane before, I thought maybe it would be a good idea to build a small prototype that would be similar to the record-breaking behemoth I'd later construct. Both planes would need to be as streamlined as possible, and as light as possible, so I planned on building them with no electronics. They would be entirely free-flight aircraft, meaning that they would rely on their inherent stability to stay in the air, rather rather than having a pilot telling them where to go with a remote control. I used foam board for the wings, drawing out the shapes of the wings and tail surfaces and cutting them out by hand. I scored along the wing so I could fold the airfoil shape and fix it in place by smearing hot glue into the creases. Polyhedral was added by folding up the wingtips. This would provide loads of stability in the air through the self-correcting aerodynamics. Now everything could be glued to a wooden dowel, which would be the fuselage. The nice thing about building simple model planes like this is that they don't take too long to assemble and therefore there isn't as much of an emotional connection when the thing inevitably smashes itself to pieces. Taking the plane outside, it took a few flights to get the plane flying correctly, but after adjusting the center of gravity a little, it managed to fly itself in circles with plenty of power. And just like that, I built my first rubber band powered aeroplane. Now before you ask me for plans to build this plane here, good news! I've just launched a brand new website where you can find the 3D printing files and templates and everything else. And there's also instructions and plans and downloads for other past projects from this channel. I didn't want to just upload some half finished files, so I've been working with a product designer to make some really nicely packaged virtual kits that you can download on this website. This is really exciting for me because I keep getting getting comments all the time about getting started with RC aeroplanes and RC cars and the other things that you sort of see on this channel. And yeah, I think that this is a really good way that I can help you get into all of that stuff through these nice finished virtual kits. You can use these templates and 3D printing files to build you know, any sort of plane really. You can just use your imagination to start experimenting and I'll be really excited to see what you come up with. These kits should be a good way to get started with building your own things. On the site there are links to all of the extra bits that you might need to get hold of such as the propeller and rubber strips but other kits like this rocket helicopter that you might recognize from a previous video can be completely 3D printed so as long as you have a printer and some filament you should be able to, to print it all in one go. There's a link in the description, so please go and check it out after the video and yeah, support my channel and the things I do by downloading one of your own kits. Okay, enough prevaricating. This is how I built the full-size aeroplane. Oh, 
As the prototype plane had worked so well, I decided to supersize it with similar foam board wings and a stick fuselage. But I'd need to make it strong enough to support its own weight while being extremely light. To provide much of the strength that the wings needed, I decided to use carbon fiber square tubing for the wing spar. This super long carbon spar could be sandwiched by the foam board to make the wings. I made a tail with a single sheet of foam board with two vertical stabilizers. To keep these nice and rigid, I added some carbon supports that were glued in place. There we go, that's nice and strong. For the fuselage, I used another piece of this square carbon and drilled some holes in it for some brass anchors for the rubber bands that would hold the wing on. So how was I going to make the motors? And how was I going to make them strong enough to take a hit? Well, I used loads more of these carbon tubes which were fitted with more 3D printed components, such as the mounts for the propeller shafts. Everything could be slid onto the tubes and assembled in batches. If I broke any of these 3D printed parts, I could simply reprint them. After a while, I had eight rubber band motor nacelles that could be equally spaced out along the wing. Checking the CG, everything seemed about right. To finish up the build, I added my Patreon's names to the tail, which is a perk of signing up to my Patreon, by the way, just so you know. And yes, thank you to all of these people here for helping me to make this video. But would the plane be light enough to fly? Wow, that's pretty good. For a model plane with this wingspan, this is seriously light. Now to see if it survives being launched into a field. Right, for the first time, I'm going to see if this plane will fly. I'm not going to wind up the motors, I'm just going to throw the plane, and if it nose dives, then that means it's nose heavy, and if it pitches upwards, then that means it's tail heavy, and I'll have to adjust the center of gravity accordingly. Balance is the key to flying machines. Everything needs to sit happily together to have the plane fly stably. My plane was designed to have no control whatsoever, so it would have to rely on its inherent stability to fly itself around. To find out how stable an aeroplane is, a few test glides are usually the best way to do it. Right, now it was time to build a system for releasing all of the propellers at once and go for a first powered test flight. But what was this system that I'd come up with? Well, trying to keep things simple, I'd come up with an aviation inspired chocks away approach where pins holding each prop could be yanked free by a helper, which would start all eight rubber motors simultaneously. However, I didn't actually have another helper on hand on this day. So I had to make do with using a rock instead. So would it work? Three, two, one. Oh, no. No, clearly not. Time to reset and try again. Three, two, one. This time no. a small gust of wind had upset the plane and rolled it. <laughs> Worse than when I was gliding it. Well, it's all in one piece at least. After another 20 minutes of winding and untangling, maybe it would be third time lucky. You ready? Three, two, one. I think we could have done with a bit of a uh, more aft CG. <laughs> so I had a few problems. The major one being that I needed to find a new way to start those propellers. Clearly my initial stone age technique was far too unreliable and tedious to set up. What I needed was an electronic solution. Although I'd be compromising the lightness of the aircraft, if I added some small lightweight servos and push rods, I could use an electronic switch on the wing to release each propeller. This seemed to work really well for a single motor, and then I managed to hook up two motors to a single servo. This meant I'd only need to use a total of four servos for the eight motors on the aeroplane. I hope this works, because I've spent absolutely ages doing all of these modifications. Three, two, one. Oh, hey. It works, yes. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, time to see if this would help. Three. Two, one. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> that was a bit of a heavy landing. So the plane's very wet again. Uh, and it looks like we've <laughs> bent a lot of these prop shafts. But apart from that, I think... Uh, Looks like all of the motor mounts are in one piece. That was a heavy landing. That was, well, I think you'd call that a crash actually, wouldn't you? Clearly I've got the center of gravity too far back now. I changed the balance and tried again. Too nose heavy this time. And the next time. 
Even though I was changing the balance, I noticed a new problem. The tail was warping due to moisture, changing the trim of the aeroplane and pitching it down into the ground, leading to more heavy landings. So what was the solution? Well, seeing as I had already added electronics to the plane, I thought, you know, the obvious next step is probably to just add radio control. I was finding it really difficult to trim this aeroplane, so maybe having actual control of the behemoth would be a good thing. I rebuilt a tail and added some servos to control the control surfaces on the tail and added the battery and other electronics on the front of the plane. I still had a problem though, which was how was I going to stop that tail warping? Well, the solution was what I should have done in the first place when I was building this plane. This spray sealer here is really good for just waterproofing foam boards and making sure that it repels water instead of soaking it up. So the day had come, could I beat my personal target of a 12 second flight? Well, you're about to find out. Camera hat on. High tech bit of equipment, this. <laughs> it moves a bit. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to see properly while, while flying the plane. Control check. Up, down, left, right. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Yes, it's going. It's going. Go up a bit more. Oh, come on. Try and get it round. We're running out of power. <laughs> oh no. Oh dear. I think we're going to go down in that field. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Successful flight! Finally! <laughs> How many test flights was that? <laughs> oh, that's a good feeling. I think we uh, we had enough power for uh, yeah a few, about uh, well I don't know how many meters that is about 50 meters. I managed to maintain that sort of altitude. I was going to try and climb a bit, but yeah, it didn't really have the power available. Also, with I think with all of the propellers moving the same way, I didn't didn't have quite enough authority to to make it go left. I think there was a bit of a torque roll issue there. So that was just over a 16 second flight in total, which is, yeah, four seconds clear of my target, which was great. In a way, it's a shame that I wasn't able to get this thing to fly free flight because I think theoretically, obviously, with a, with a lighter aeroplane, it would have flown further. But I think that this plane has actually still got a load of potential that I've not explored yet. And this, as it turns out, might be a good thing because the other day, Guinness World Records got in touch with me and said, hey, we'd like to see you break this record officially. Here is what you need to do if you are to break the official record. In the official documentation for the official world record, it says that I'd need to fly this plane for 30 seconds, but this gave me an idea. Why not open this up to everyone? Obviously, I've not got this official record, but maybe one of you out there could build a bigger aeroplane and get it to fly for 30 seconds. I'd be really interested to see that. This competition hasn't got a prize or anything, but <laughs> I'm gonna continue working on my aeroplane and yeah, you let me know what you're working on and I'd be interested to see it. If you want to get started with making your own things like I do on this channel, then as I said earlier, go into the description, go and check out my website and download yourself one of my virtual kits. If you want to watch another one of my videos, then here's one that I think you might like.